everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Pinapple and today I'm doing the Blood Manor Speed Build. So if you like this build, you can download it on the gallery. My origin ID is PinappleYT. Um, this build costs about 230,000 simoleons, so it's pretty expensive. Um, and it's on a 30 by 20 lot. And it took me about, well, over five hours to build. Um, I had a lot of trouble with this one mostly just with the core um i think because i'm actually like i'm not never i'm never bored of halloween never but i think i am a little bit bored at how limited spooky stuff we have like we have the spooky stuff pack but there really isn't that much in it like there really isn't like you have i think like a couple wall decor items a couple lights you know carpet stuff and i mean it's nice but I want more, um, especially because I like Halloween so much. Um, but yeah, so I wanted this to be a sort of Victorian type haunted house. And I imagined it as being, you know how in the movies with the haunted house, it's always like, oh, it's that deserted house that nobody dares enter, um, that sort of thing. I kind of want it like that. So I end up putting fencing around it that I think kind of looks like chain link fence, you know, sort of like warding people off and so I wanted it to be this house where um it just it's it looks deserted and everybody is told that it's deserted but in reality it actually has people living in it um so that's pretty exciting um but yeah so here I am just getting the house shape to take form and I saw a picture of a Victorian house on Pinterest um, which is what I kind of base the front sort of shape off of that, like that little tower and the porch area. Um, but that was like a super cutesy Victorian home. It was not a creepy Victorian home like I'm making. Um, but yeah, I actually just started a, um, Pinterest for my channel. Um, and so there I'm going to be posting like little collages of the builds I've made. And I'll also be pinning, um, a lot of inspiration quotes, quotes posts pins yes um but yeah anything that because i i do get a lot of inspiration from instagram it's nice to look at actual architecture especially because i don't live in a super just like ah uh, super like diverse architectural area um it's pretty suburban so um it's nice to get some inspiration so i will be leaving a link to that down below if you're interested you can check it out um but yeah um like i said this this build that took me a while to kind of get everything working out and oh my gosh when it came to the windows there was such a struggle like i cut out a lot of the coloring um i think pretty much all of the coloring for um, the windows and for the exterior, um, just because, gosh, this game, this game gets to me sometimes, like, nothing matches, <laughs> nothing, like, oh my goodness, all of the wood tones, like, they're all slightly different, and it just looks, it looks weird to me, it upsets me, it, it I, I have a bit of, like, obsession with things being perfect and so this like oof oof um also like none of the windows like not all of the windows come in all black and so that was also like rawr <laughs> um but yeah this house is also on a super tall foundation um, and that's sort of to mirror the goth house which is right across the street from it. Also I thought that just made it look more intimidating. Um, and so here I was trying to do something creative with the roofing but I gave up on that. Um, I just couldn't find um, the roof piece that I exactly wanted. So I kind of just gave up, um, but I, you know, I'm just trying to get the right feel for this house. Um, but yeah, it's kind of weird that how much I like Halloween and whatnot, um, because I'm not into haunt or not into haunted. I'm not into scary movies. Like they freak me out. Like it's not that. I personally don't believe in a lot of like the scary stuff that's in the movie, but I associate that scary stuff with real life, um, 
sort of situations kind of like I watched paranormal activity and the thing that creeped me out the most was that there's this one point where the demon is whispering in her ear as she's sleeping and that just gave me the heebie-jeebies I'm actually like shuddering right now like because it just makes me imagine like some stranger coming into your home and whispering into your pillow in the middle of the night and ugh, no <laughs> so I can't actually do haunted or scary movies like hardly at all I can do like the kitty scary movies, you know, like Halloween Town or Nightmare Before Christmas or Coraline. Um, although I actually just watched Coraline this year because I thought it was a really scary movie. I don't even know. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice, my throat is a little, oof, it's a little bit off. Um, but yeah, I have always, always loved Halloween so much. It's definitely my favorite holiday, and I had a little story I wanted to share with you guys. Um, so, um, some of you may or may not know this or remember this, but when I was a kid, and maybe this is still going on, but about 10 years ago when I was a kid in the United States, there was this huge rumor going around that people were putting razor blades in candy, which is a serious thing and not good, um, but it pretty much turned out that that was completely like not true. Um, it wasn't actually happening. It was just an urban story told to scare people. Um, and so, but I went trick or treating with um, my friends and one of the chaperones was parents to, to the kids, of course. And she believed this. She truly believed that there was a potential that somebody was putting razor blades in the candy. So she was checking every single piece of candy that her kids had. And so, you know, she'd be like, okay, show me what candy you want to eat. Let me check it and then you can eat it. And so I picked out what candy I wanted and I presented it to her and she's like, oh no, I don't need to check that. And I was just like, oh, but she's like, oh, your, your parents can check that later. And I was like, but I want to eat it now. And she's like, oh, it'll be fine. And I'm just kind of like, looking back, I'm just like, how awful of a person do you have to be that if you truly believe that somebody might be putting razor blades in candy that you're not going to check other kids' candies, just your own kids' candy? Like, that's just bizarre. Like, that always gets to me when I think about it. Like, I'm not like upset. I'm just kind of like, what are you? <laughs> like, who does that? That's like the weirdest thing. Um, but that is the end of that little story time. And so here you can see I did all of the coloring for this house. So I'm sorry if you're interested in that. I just, it was just such a struggle. And there were parts of it that I didn't even record, let alone cut out. Um, and so that's why I said this took about five hours to build. Because I'm not sure. This build really, really got to me. Oh my goodness. Um, I It was, it was a struggle. Um, but uh, if you did not notice earlier, um, I put in a secret door. Um, and so there will be a secret um, sort of passageway down to the basement. And so I'll get more into that later on. But I just wanted to let you guys know that that little exciting tidbit is coming up. Um, but yeah, here I'm working on the kitchen. And I I don't know. Like, it, I find it really hard to make things look spooky, per se. Um, but hopefully it all does. Everything's kind of dim. And I also apologize for any of the angles for building with this. I found this build really hard to like do like in general, like even just um, me myself, like trying to get a good angle on what I wanted to build. And so I apologize if anything is like really awkward angle for building, like with all the walls up or something. Um, or if it's really dark, because I, you know, I wanted this house to have a creepy feel, and so I didn't want it to be too bright. Um, so yeah, well, it's just like, I don't know if that's the best. Um, <laughs> but here I am doing the dining room, and this is probably the least decorated room, uh, mostly because it's just sort of a passageway. And this bathroom, I always forget about this bathroom. This bathroom is so tucked back in the corner. Like whenever I was counting like how many bathrooms were in the house or whatever, I always forgot this one until I was like, wait, wasn't there one on this, their first floor? Did I imagine that? And then it'd be like, oh, it's right there. I didn't even notice. Um, but yeah, so there's one bathroom on the first floor and then there's two bathrooms on the second floor. <clears throat> I'm so sorry my throat. Um, there's two bathrooms on the second floor, but those two are both connected to bedrooms. Um, but yeah, so this room that I'm working on, I finally put a light up to see what I was doing, but 
This room, I feel like, would be the perfect place for one of my friends. Like, I was showing this house um, to my boyfriend, and he was looking at one of the rooms, and he's like, our, you know, our, our friend would love, you know, this room. And then I, like, switched over to this one, and I was like, no, she'd love this room. And he was like, yep, yep. This is the room originally I thought she'd like, but... Um, yeah, she's really awesome. Um, but yeah, so I did, so the purple room is supposed to sort of be more girly, I guess. And then this room, I guess, is more gender neutral. Um, cause black is actually a pretty gender neutral color. Interesting. I had never thought about that before. You know, usually when people say gender neutral, you think of sort of like beige or yellow or green or tan. Um, those sort of colors, but black is also a gender neutral color for sure. Although all colors are gender neutral in my eyes. I feel like I somehow managed to work that into every single speed build I talk about. So I apologize if I sound like a little bit of a broken record. Um, but this is the master or well, it was, it was the master bedroom. Here we back and we're back in it. Um, and I really, I think this room turned out to be the spookiest of the bedrooms because I end up putting a two skeletons just sort of standing over the bed and I sort of imagine them of being the bodies of whoever used to live in this house slash maybe does live in this house. Um, so that was really cool and also there are more portraits of dudes in this house than there are girls and so I kind of imagine like it was a bad dude or whatever who like owned this place at some point and then like maybe um he made his wife disappear or something and then she came back to haunt him I don't know um something cool like that but here are the little skeletons and they're actually also pretty adorable um I thought it was a lot of fun to do this build but yeah, like I was saying earlier, I would love to have more spooky stuff in this um, in The Sims. Like one of the things I found myself really wanting was the sort of classic jar full of eyes. I thought that would be really cool. Um, instead, I have there are some jars of like weird alien creatures, and that actually came from the um get to work expansion pack with the whole alien side of everything and so that's kind of around there and like in the black um all black bedroom there is a little like tank that holds i think like a space porcupine and so i thought that looked kind of cool like the kid owns some creepy little pet or something like right now it's just a jar but i ended up changing it up and i thought that would be really cool i think i also so We've had the same Halloween stuff since last year, and last year I did do some building, and I have a couple builds up on the gallery, um, so you should definitely go check those out, and one of them is the basement of this house. I decided to recycle it um, because I wanted to do the same thing, and I didn't want to do it over again, um, and so... Um, I had already done a spooky basement, and so I, I kind of felt a little bit like I was... Like, I'd already used everything. Um, and we got some stuff in the Day of the Dead um, freebie um, stuff. Like, I used some of the little paper cutouts on the wall in this room. Um, but it wasn't really that spooky because Day of the Dead is not Halloween. You know, it's celebrating a completely different thing. Um, and so it really it didn't quite satisfy my personal thirst for blood, no, <laughs> for just spooky stuff. Um, yeah, so it'd be nice to also have like hands sticking out of the ground or more gravestones, you know, that sort of thing. And there was a leak on Twitter and it was an official leak. It wasn't just made up. It was from some an EA person's account. Um, saying that there would be more spooky packs coming up, um, but the quarter teaser did not show that at all. Um, and so I guess it'll be coming out later, but I am super excited for that. I'm wondering if it's going to come out in like more than a year though, because if it's not coming out now, I don't see why they'd release it at most any other time of the year. It's kind of a weird thing to do but I guess if you don't really care about that it doesn't really matter when they release it but I'm thinking it's going to be a supernatural pack which 
for building I'm excited for, but for gameplay, I'm more of a realist, I think, when it comes, well, not really. I mean, if you take a look at my failure Frank Furter, um, let's play, you would not call me a realist, but, you know, I don't know. I guess I'm just picky. There's different things I want first, but that's kind of true of every simmer, like, oh, goodness, we all want all the things all the time, immediately, and of perfect quality. <laughs> Um, but I have kind of already talked about most of everything that I want to say, especially at this point of the build. Um, it's pretty obvious that I'm just kind of going for the scary sort of vibe in this house. Um, so I figure I could do more story time. So, um, I apologize. I know not everybody's into that. It's kind of a grab bag. Some people really like it when people just talk about their lives and their, like, you know, their own personal stories when they do their speed builds and other people only want people to talk about the speed build and then there's like people who like both um so i hope you guys like both um <laughs> but yeah so i lived um in a pretty rural area when i was a kid and so i never really got to trick or treat in my area um so i would always um like there was one year where i think like we would go to trunk or treats which if you don't know what that is it's when a whole bunch of people get together and they decide they're going to have a mini trick-or-treating area and everybody decorates the trunk of their car um, or the boot i guess some people call it um basically the storage area of their car and they decorate it with Halloween and they put candy in there and kids go from car to car to get candy, which now that I'm talking about that, that sounds like the sketchiest thing. That sounds absolutely and utterly sketchy. Um, but they were usually, they're usually hosted by things like schools and churches. So I guess that makes them less sketchy. I don't know. I think you have to register um, your car and whatnot before you can just start giving candy to kids. Oh my goodness. I can't believe I never thought of it like that before. Um, but yeah, so um, I did a lot of those. Um, and I also went trick-or-treating with a lot of friends in their neighborhoods. And that's some of my best memories. And then there was one year I actually went trick-or-treating in a mall. Um, some stores will give out candy each store, and so you'd go around. And I dressed up as Pikachu. Um, I remember that. That was a fun Halloween, too. Um, but here I am just adjusting this sort of spooky laboratory basement. And so I imagine this as being kind of like a torture chamber, kind of like an experimental place. And so I think the creepiest area is that sort of medical table. Um, but then there's also like a desk area and I there's like a workbench and it all looks really really spooky to me um and so I had to adjust the shape a bit for everything to fit um and I changed the lighting up a bit um and then this sort of attic area is also a continuation of that sort of theme um and I put stuff in jars up here because I I love putting basement or attics into these houses even though they're not really usable which is a little bit sad you'd have to teleport a sim up there so that kind of stinks um but whenever I do a basement in this or an attic, sorry, in the Sims, I always think of um, Little House in the Big Woods, which is a sort of pioneer sort of children's story. And they and it has beautiful illustrations and it showed the attic and it was just full of preserved food and foods that didn't need to be preserved per se, like pumpkins or whatever. And they would store stuff for the winter. So that's what I always think about when I think of the attics. Um, but here I am starting to decorate the exterior of the house a bit. And um, I decided to go with the sort of blood theme once I got to this point in the build because I decided to start adding more red elements. And so I add this red ivy that kind of looks like the house is bleeding a bit um and so that's really cool and so that's kind of where the name for this house came from um but i wanted it to look really overgrown like i wanted it to look like at one point it had a purpose like at one point everything was meticulously planned out the house was well cared for but now it wasn't and so here i'm doing these weird stuff with the fences because i feel like when people put up chain link fences around properties they're usually doing it pretty quickly and so sometimes it doesn't always fit and so they're always trying to like you know just like throw it in there you, know, you have to work your way around the trees and stuff and so that's kind of what I wanted to do with that um and so I think that's a lot of fun and I end up using something I did not think I would use um 
there is a Christmas lights sort of tree um, and I colored the lights. I went back um, after I filmed all of this and I changed all of the coloring of the lights. A lot of them now have red tones um, to give everything a spookier aura. And so the Christmas tree is like light and I changed it to red and so it's like red lighted up tree and it's really creepy and I like it. <laughs> um, I'm like wiggling my fingers over here like you can see it. Um, and then I also added in this sort of alien um, moss and so I kind of imagined it as being like glowing red ooze. <laughs> uh, but here is that sort of leafy stuff that I was talking about. Um, but yeah, like I said, I love Halloween. I loved it as a kid and once I got older, I also started going to Halloween parties and my favorite Halloween, like the one that I remember the most was when I was like in high school and we did go trick or treating. It, I was trick or treating late into life because free candy. You know how there's always those shows where the kid is like, oh, I'm too old to trick or treat anymore. And it's just like, no, no. If you're, if you're in high school, I think you're still okay to trick or treat. But um, my friend lived in a good neighborhood for trick or treating. So we went over to her house and we went trick or treating. And one of my friends who went with us, um, he matured pretty quickly and he was pretty tall and he had a beard in high school. Like he, he looked a lot older than he was and so at first he was trick-or-treating with his little niece and then he joined us so at first you know he was you know kind of doing more mature stuff and then he joined us and so we go to this house and he's the first one to knock on the door and the dude opens the door and my friend says trick-or-treat in his like really low voice and the, the guy who answers the door is just like i'm not giving you candy you have a beard <laughs> Like, he was so offended that this, like, what he perceived to be an adult was trying to get candy. <laughs> it was so sad. He refused to give him candy, but he gave everybody else candy. Um, so that was really, really awkward. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was like, I had so many fun adventures that night. It was like the best Halloween I ever had. Um, and now I mostly just go to parties occasionally. Um, but yeah. Uh, this year I'm planning on getting a whole bunch of little baggies of candy and I'm planning on putting them on the doors around my apartment complex. Um, so that'll be like reverse trick-or-treating. So I'm pretty excited for that. This is also right here on the screen, supposed to be a sort of blood pool. Um, I thought it looked really cool. I think this lot looks really great at night. In the daytime it doesn't look all that intimidating. <laughs> um, uh, and I filmed in the daylight so you could see what I was doing. Um, but yeah, like, mm -mm, this is not, I'm, I'm bad at horror, I guess, maybe, I don't know. But <laughs> if you like this build, feel free to give me a like, a comment, or subscribe, especially if you'd like to, um, be notified as to when my next builds are. Um, you can download this build off of the gallery. My origin ID is PineappleYT. I hope you guys are all having a great day, and please be safe on Halloween if you choose to celebrate it. It can be very dangerous, but I will see you guys next time. Bye!